For today's video, I've partnered with Codecrafters, but more on that later in the video. So I've participated in five hackathons so far, and I placed like relatively high in all of them. Hackathons are super fun and they also give you something to write on your resume. Now, I know a lot of people think hackathons are only beneficial for like freshmen or sophomore, because if you put like a hackathon like portion in your resume it might look like you're kind of like inexperienced and you don't have much industry experience as much as i agree with that i do think that hackathons are great not necessarily for your resume but one of the biggest reason is networking networking can be with both of your fellow competitors and also the judges right you're surrounded with people with the same interests and the same passions and so it's a really good opportunity to to branch out and you know, reach out to people, talk to random people, talk to the people sitting right next to you. And the best part about hackathons are, you know, like you don't have to win. That's not where the ultimate goal lies, right? You can also just write the project itself on your resume. The project that you make is more important. So you can add that to, you know, your project section. And like also, uh, this is kind of unlikely, but there is a chance that there will be like headhunters or recruiters at the hackathon if it's big enough and they might try to recruit you who knows so i made this video to share five lessons i learned from my five hackathons and i hope you learned something and i hope you relate number one it's advantageous to know your team so knowing each member in your team is important because you have to be comfortable working with them and you have to you know really uh, know their working style so it doesn't mean that you know you just have to know them personally or you're just friends with them right you have to know their work style meaning like how they work at what pace they work and you also have to know like what they're good at so that you guys won't necessarily have just only like overlapping skills if your teammates all have different skill sets that can all contribute to your project that's probably the best right high synergy equals high workflow and that equals to more fun i guess and better results right when i first did my hackathon i didn't know everyone in my team like i only know like one of them but i knew their academic background because i mean we went to the same school and took the same classes and if you watched my like previous hackathon videos you know that i generally stuck to the same teammates and i became more comfortable working with them number two idea is life right so you want to focus on what your product is meant to do how it is significant and relevant and how it will make an impact like specific impact on certain industries that you are aiming for and what type of problems that it solves no matter how good of a programmer you are, your team will not be able to make a fully complete project in only 24 hours, I mean, or 48 hours. It's just not possible. So you have to be very meticulous when brainstorming or in researching. And I mean, it would probably be fine to spend like two, three, four hours on it, honestly. Like, don't worry if you spend too much time on brainstorming because if you have a productive brainstorming slash researching session, then your idea will most likely be close to complete and also good. Obviously, this is not to say that the implementation part is not important. It's also extremely important. It's advantageous to know different technologies and how to build your own product from scratch on your own, whether that be a website or a chatbot or anything. And speaking of building things from scratch, Codecrafters is the best platform to learn how to build a well-known developer platforms from scratch. Codecrafters provide interactive coding challenges and projects for developers. And users can work on various coding exercises, challenges, and projects to enhance their coding proficiency, problem-solving abilities, and familiarity with different programming languages and frameworks. I've actually been working on the build your own Docker challenge. There's different stages here, and you just have to complete each stage to move on to the next one. Yeah, if I can't solve it like i usually i like to look at other people's code here it says in the previous stage we executed a program that exited so yeah it shows how the code how your code will be run anyways okay so i have to use crute but i don't know what the heck crute is oh i already looked it up okay so i imported some uh libraries necessary for this stage so basically we'll we can create a new like directory path so and we can use temp file dot um make a temporary directory okay so apparently we can use this um library to copy a file from one location to another and also like save its uh metadata and then we use crute which is from os os dot ch root and so we want to combine the path from the root directory to the base path so we do uh command equal what this does is it makes sure that when the command is used, it's like the the call is specified for the root directory. I want to see if this works. This and 
build was successful. Let's see if it actually... Okay, cool. All tests pass. Congrats. So yeah, it, it does a, you know, a little confetti. And I completed the stage, which is awesome. You can also check out different platforms. There's Docker, there's BitTorrent, Redis. You can build your own HTTP server and whatnot. I just use Docker. There's also like language tracks that you can choose from. So you can decide which languages that you want to uh, code in. Frankly, these challenges can get really difficult, but it's very, very good practice. So if you want to learn more about Code Crafters, check out their website using the link in the description below. Now back to the video. Three front-end developers and one back-end or machine learning developer. So this one might be a little controversial. I think the most efficient and effective team formation would be three front-end developers and one back-end slash machine learning developer. And this is simply because for all my past experiences for all five hackathons, I built web apps and the front end 100% took the longest. And usually the back end was like fairly simple. All we had to do was just set up a server, you know, make a few models and that's pretty much it. There's no difficult or like complicated logic involved in it. Uh, future Sam here. I just wanted to intervene real quick and say that obviously the back end could get complicated, but I was just saying that for all of the products that I've worked on for these hackathons, the back end was fairly simple. So like for the front end, you have to make all of the, the pages, the functionalities, the use cases and design. And it's just a lot of work. And usually one back end is enough. And I said one machine learning uh, developer because if you do have a machine learning developer in your team, he or she can spend most of the time just training and testing their data sets and finding the most appropriate data for your project. And, and doing that still, you know, leaves some time to create a simple backend structure. Don't focus too much on the details. Now this one ties to number two, which is like the idea part, but you don't want to be focusing too much on the details of your project. But at the same time, this highly depends on the judges because the judges usually don't have enough time to look over every single detail of your project. And most likely they won't look at your project source code. This is just from my experience, but a lot of the judges were not very technical. So all they cared about was what your project did, how easy it was for them to use, and if it worked properly. If it gets the work done, it gets the work done. And even if an engineer demos your project or in the very rare case looks at your source code, just make sure that nothing was hard coded and just make sure you have your functionalities and the design set correctly. And if it functions the way you intend it to and it's pretty, then you're good to go. If you can't present, everything is pointless. So if you think of your team as like a company, then the presentation is the marketing aspect of your project. Just like how Apple wouldn't have been as successful if Steve Wozniak didn't have Steve Jobs, if you can't market your product, your efforts are pretty much useless. Presentations can either be like in front of a crowd or it can also be like a booth style where judges walk up to your booth and test out your product. So for presentation styles, I guess you just have to be prepared. Make sure you're able to present smoothly. I mean, I guess it's not necessary to make a script. If you know your product well enough, I think it should flow smoothly. But I personally like to write scripts so that I can, you know, have a basic structure and have at least like bullet points so that you can remember what to talk about. And I think this is important. You have to be smart on who presents, right? This isn't a class project where everyone has to, you know, contribute to the presentation. I mean, sure, it might be good if everyone gets a chance, but first of all, you're, you'll most likely only have like five minutes or less to present. Right? And then if there's friction between like switching different members during your uh, presentation, it might confuse the judges and the audience and it could get, you know, kind of disorganized. If you do have only like five minutes or less to present, then just make one or two people present and those are the people who should be the best at presenting. For booth style, just try to connect with the judges and make it personal and show them hands-on examples and let them use it. If an engineer comes by, explain the detail, explain how you implemented it and clarify certain use cases so that they'll be able to, you know, fully understand understand your project. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Good luck on your upcoming hackathon and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.